It is my honor and privilege to introduce to you our distinguished chief guest for this momentous occasion. He is the general manager of Lanka Electricity Company, LECO, and a visiting lecturer at the University of Morotua, Kotalawala Defense Uni Academy or University, and the Sri Lanka Open University. He also lectured at SLIT. His impressive educational background includes a Bachelor of Law from the Open University of Sri Lanka, an engineering degree in electrical engineering from the prestigious University of Morotua, a diploma in power systems from Science University in Norway, and a PhD from the prestigious Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh, UK. As a fellow member of the Institute of Engineering Technology of UK, his contribution to the field are widely acknowledged and celebrated. With over 24 years of experience in the energy sector, his expertise and insights are truly invaluable. Let us warmly welcome our distinguished chief guest, Dr. Narendra De Silva. I now invite Dr. Narendra De Silva to deliver the convocation address. Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, both of them are my lecturers, and uh, who were in the stage when the day that I took my degree, as you all, the prestigious academia, the parents, and their graduates. First of all, I think it's in order for me to render a heartful gratitude as a member of the Engineering Fraternity of Sri Lanka to the academic staff of this university and to the parents of these brilliant graduates for making a brilliant group of engineers and donating them to the Engineering Fraternity of Sri Lanka. You are the engineers who are going to take over the infrastructure and the institutes that we create on the day that we retire and go home. You are the future of engineering in this country. Engineers are good at predicting the future. It is due to the very reason that we are the creators of the future. In our hands that the future is being molded for the rest of the world. So I must say that you, the future engineers, are going to have a brilliant future. For that future, I want to first congratulate you all. Which kind of a future are we looking at? I'm pretty sure that at this moment, the creators of the future, such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, cryptocurrency, internet of things, smart grid, the list is quite long. Anything and everything is pretty clear and are not new to you all. You have learned all these artifacts during the last couple of years in this prestigious institute. That is the probable future and most likely future that we are going to look into. But what I want to tell here is not that. If I'm delivering a lecture on this matter, it would be another traditional discussion. But I want to tell you here is the definite future. 100% sure things what are going to happen. And 100% sure things what you all are going to work with. Recent publication by the World Bank. The World Bank was in, involved in a study of the Sri Lanka renewable sector. They have made a publication stating that we have a wind potential of 54,000 megawatts. Staggering volume of 54,000 megawatts both onshore and offshore. 
out of which they have identified 24,000 megawatts of wind is definite to be installed. 24,000 megawatts of wind is cannot, can never be consumed by Sri Lanka. In a recent seminar, when we mentioned this, the British High Commissioner to India asked us the question, why then you cultivate tea? The whole quantum of tea that you cultivate and produce can never be consumed by Sri Lanka and by Sri Lankans. You cultivate those for the purpose of export. Equally, this country is going to export wind energy in the forthcoming time. At the moment, we are considered a very rich, resourceful country in Asia. None of us are fully aware of that context. In the future, there are going to be a lot of mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, civil engineers involved in this future, in building offshore wind power plants. There will be a lot of civil engineers who are drilling our seabed and installing foundations. There will be a lot of mechanical engineers who are manufacturing blades. Blades cannot be imported. Blades can, the transportation cost is the highest for wind blades. There will be a lot of mechanical engineers who are transporting them offshore and installing them. There will be a lot of electrical engineers who are ma maintaining these wind plants. This country is going to be a beehive of activity, building wind farms, installing wind farms, and probably this is going to be our income source for the forthcoming 100 years. This is the definite future. Not like NBIOT or smart grid. Not like that. This is definite, 100% sure future. And we are not going to do anything other than this as well. But this is a potential which we cannot refrain from harvesting. The day that in deep Sahara Desert, somebody found, somebody drilled the ground and found oil. That day, the, 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 the countrymen of that country would not have thought a future of that country. I feel that our country is also standing somewhat similar stance at the moment. If we don't do that, if you don't do that, somebody else is going to do that because this is world resource. Nobody is going to let this resource lay aside simply because of the fact that human civilization is made around energy and the future energy sources are going to be solar, wind and nuclear. Any country which is having wind potential either got to produce engineers and harvest that wind potential, or else somebody is going to do that. That is 100% definite. So this is one aspect of, I don't have time to go into the other aspects of the future of engineering, but I'm definitely sure this is going to happen. And I'm definitely sure 99% of the engineers who are here in another five years' time or ten years' time, I'm going to see the, you all involved in this thriving industry of wind. There will be hydrogen plants, methane plants, ammonia plants, because we cannot absorb that energy to the national grid. At least 50% of the energy got to be converted to fuels. The future fuels are going to be hydrogen or through methanation methane or ammonia. Your chemical engineers are going to get involved in building these plants. We'll be seeing a lot of ships transporting hydrogen, ammonia, methane from this country. That's the future 
to which that you all are going to go. In that regard, again, I want to thank this prestigious academia, as well as the parents of you, you in making a brilliant group of engineers. And further, I want to congratulate you all for such a brilliant future. Thank you very much.